Okay, hello everyone. So I'm very, really glad uh, today to be uh, in this new room, which is all about open science and tools and technologies. And so I'm here to speak about uh, empowering social scientists with web mining tool. So we will see together what is web mining and uh, how we can like uh, teach researchers how to do so and uh, what tool we developed to help them achieve uh, like amazing tasks. So uh, hello everyone. I am Guillaume Plick, aka Young the Real on the internet. Uh, it's a youth uh, mistake, and so I am a research engineer for a research laboratory uh, in France, which is called Science Po Media Lab, but I, we will talk about that a bit more uh, later. So, uh, what is web mining? So, who here uh, knows about web mining? What? Okay, that's nice. So then I will skip. So, what is web mining? Just a reminder for everyone. So. I will only talk about web mining as a tool to be able to like collect data from the web and afterwards uh, how we are going to analyze this data and like produce insights from this data. So basically on a technical point of view web mining is actually two or three things. The first thing the first thing being scraping. So what is scraping? Scraping is the act of retro engineering the HTML of a web page to be able to extract back the data that produces the HTML page. So, for instance, here you have an example, which is a page from the EchoJS uh, website, which is actually a hacker news for uh, JavaScript, basically. And so, scraping would be to like open your inspector, uh, check how the HTML has been written to display uh, this visual page, and try to like extract from the HTML the data that we are interested in. So, for instance, here it would be uh, the title of the articles shared and the link to the articles shared, and so on. So this is the first thing, scraping. So extracting data from web pages uh, using uh, retro, engineering and, uh, uh, retro engineering and so on. So scraping. Uh, the second thing web mining is, is actually crawling. So crawling is a bit different. Here we are going to design a bot or a spider or a program which is going to browse the web automatically and that will like slowly uh, compose a network of pages, of sites, etc. And we are interested in two things what is the actual content on those pages and what is the network that's, that is drawn by like this uh, whole uh, navigation on the web. So scraping, crawling, and the third thing is actually like collecting data uh, from APIs. So nowadays, for instance, Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn uh, share, share some data with you and so we can use and leverage their APIs to be able to collect data and then gain some insights. So uh, this is it. Web mining here for the purpose of the, the talk will be scraping, crawling, APIs. So the question is, why is this useful to social sciences? I'm putting social into brackets because basically it could be useful to any science, I guess. So physics or chemistry or so on. But since I'm working for social scientists, I will speak from the point of view of social sciences. So why is this useful to collect data on the web? So the bad take on this is actually, okay, Every social sciences data collection is biased. If you do like, for instance, questionnaires, or if you do interviews, you have biased uh, data, which is uh, mostly due to what we call the observer's paradox. So when you ask people something, they will like be biased because you are asking them uh, the thing and you are in the room observing them and so on. Uh, the thing which is really interesting with the internet is that people express themselves without being asked to. So they are like just going to express their opinion, but nobody is observing, I know, lol because I'm observing right now. And uh, so it's less biased. So web mining would be a superior source of data for social sciences because it's not biased. So this is the bad take. The good take on this is that internet data come with its own biases. For instance, if you collect data on Google Trends, uh, of course you have uh, like other biases that you will find and you should be aware of those biases. And so to be able to control and manage those new biases, you have to apply media studies and science and technology studies, which is a, uh, a large field of social sciences which study those, uh, those issues. And so the conclusion, the good take on this is that web mining is still another very, very interesting and very large data source. So why not collect it? We should collect it because it, it's just a, a good thing and we can. So yeah, the issue here is that web mining is hard. Okay, to be able to perform web mining tasks, 
to be able to scrape, to crawl, you need to know the web. And when I say the web, I, I say the whole web. So you need to know how DNS works, HTTP works, HTML works, CSS works, JS, the DOM, AJAX, uh, SSR, CSR, XPath, and so on. You've got a lot of things to know and learn about the web to be able to like retro engineer it. So how do you teach researchers and for instance, social, re uh, re uh, social scientists, uh, those web technologies? So basically the same as everyone else. So you could like teach them uh, CSS and HTML and so on and, uh, and try to like empower them through uh, this teaching. But uh, what most consider as an easy layer of technologies, I don't know here, but there is a, a, like a misconception in technologies that says that uh, the web is actually really easy. It's really not. And we are really standing on the shoulders of, of giants. That, does someone here have, has already tried to teach someone who is like new to the, um, the web technologies how the web actually works? Did someone do does the, this job? Okay. Uh, usually, when you do that, you you remember like you notice that you are standing on a, a huge mountain of skills, which is actually really uh, daunting. So it's not really easy to teach people uh, about uh, web technologies. So uh, another question here is how to teach researchers how to scrape, for instance. So they know about web technologies, they know a bit about JavaScript and Python. So how can we empower them and teach them, uh, them how to scrape? And then you also have other issues, which are a bit different, which is, for instance, you are fighting the platforms and their APIs. Platforms will try to like, prevent you from applying scraping and crawling. You've got some legal issues in some countries. In some countries, for example, Denmark, like teachers avoid uh, teaching people scraping because it's considered like a lock, lock picking, for instance. It's considered a bit illegal or gray. And uh, you have to wiggle when you publish something using scraping because uh, sometimes you have to say, oh no, I did not scrape. I had a monkey army clicking on the button really fast. <clears throat> so you have a lot of uh, hoops to, uh, to jump through. And uh, what's more, and this is something I really want to stress today, is that uh, Jupiterizing uh, researchers is not a solution. Sometimes we say, okay, we are going to empower researchers, we are going to teach them everything they need to know, they are going to learn Python, Jupyter, web technologies, and they are going to scrape by themselves. This is uh, a really good solution, but it's not really applicable uh, to the real world. So, for instance, and what's more in social sciences, some researchers don't have the time nor the will to learn all those skills. And we should be okay as a community, we should be okay with that. It's okay. Researchers don't have to, uh, to learn the skills. And uh, the question then is how are we going to empower them uh, all the same? And what's more, and this is some, the second point again uh, against the jupiterization of um, researchers, is that web mining is actually really, really, really hard. It's really a craftsmanship. Basically web mining is a job, it's not a skill. So internet, for instance, is a dirty, dirty, dirty place. So you've got conventions, basically. So you are supposed to code a website like correctly, uh, cleanly, but basically everything is really badly implemented. And so brothers to, today are really like heuristical wonders. They have a lot of routines and programs to make sure that the, the, the web page that you sent, which is really messy, will be read by the browsers correctly. So you, you have to know all of those uh, things when you want to, to do web mining. Uh, what's more, you need to know about like things which are con considered advanced in uh, informatics, which is, uh, for instance, uh, how to multi-thread uh, a program, how to parallelize things, how to throttle your uh, AP <coughs> HTTP request. And if you don't know how to do that, you will harm uh, actual people. For instance, at the beginning of our uh, journey, we did not know how to throttle HTTP request. So we basically cut uh, all our university's access to Google which is a bit problematic, not too much. And you need to know all about those kind of stuff which are really complicated if you want to be able to actually perform web mining. You need to know a lot of skills. So what I mean here is that it really is a craftsmanship. It really is a job. And uh, you can't expect people to be researchers and web miners. So the question then is how are we going to empower uh, researchers all the same? And the answer here is by designing tools suited to their research question. So we need to have designers. Who is a designer in this room? Him. Yeah. So we need more designers. 
And so how did we do that? So I work for a laboratory which is called Sciences Po Media Lab. And the seminal idea of the lab was to like gather three kinds of people. So social science researchers, uh, designers, such as uh, this guy, and uh, engineers, so, so, such as me. And so we are going to like mix those people and we are going to design tools which are suited to the researchers' uh, questions and uh, work. This is basically it. Uh, uh, uh. So, uh, what I propose here is to, uh, to guide you through uh, some of the tools we, we designed to uh, be able to like empower, really empower uh, social scientists to perform web mining tasks. And so the first one we did uh, was called R2.js. So it's a bad pun on R2D2. And the idea here is, um, was, uh, was beginning from the, the following thing. If you know about like modern web technologies, you will, uh, you will fastly uh, encounter uh, something which is called like uh, dynamic rendering, which means that the, the page is not rendered on the server, it's rendered on the client <coughs> using JavaScript and so on. It's really complicated. And if you want to emulate them, emulate this to be able to scrape, it's kind of difficult. So the idea was to actually parasite the web browser to perform some web mining tasks. <coughs> but I, I know it's a bit abstract, so I'm going to try a small demo time, so everything will break now. This is how it works. So for instance, let's say you have a researcher who wants to scrape this web page, get the whole list as a CSV uh, table. So you are, you are going to go to the page, and then you are going to inject some parasite code to help you like scrape the data and provide uh, the researcher with the data. So I use a bookmarklet, which is called R2, which is loaded directly into the web page context. And R2 is going to help me to do some stuff. First, it can do some sound, which is its most interesting feature. Then I will be able to use like something like uh, old, uh, old school uh, jQuery. Doo -doo -doo -doo. And using like CSS uh, stuff, really basic stuff, I will be able to scrape data. So here I'm just attempting to like scrape the data from the website, but directly within the web page's uh, JavaScript context. And when I have that, I'm also able to help the researchers by doing this thing. Yeah. Yes, it doesn't work because I done no. Oh no. Sorry, it's a bad uh, life coding situation. Yeah, 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 yeah. Doot -doot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and so now I have like the, the data that does not work. <laughs> So basically, I've scraped uh, the, the thing as a CSV file, and I'm now able to provide it to the researchers. The main point here is that it's still code, but the fact is you can like use this same code to generate uh, bookmarklets, custom bookmarklets for the, the researchers. So I, it means that I will go to this kind of interface, I will paste my code here, and then I will create something which is actually a bookmark for the researchers. You just have to copy it on this web browser, and then it will only go to this page click on the button and it will download the CSV for him. And so um, for this kind of scenario, we have researchers that like do some really qualitative uh, search on website and just want to like um, pick some list and aggregate them. And so we use this tool, R2.js, to provide them with uh, this kind of uh, like haddock and tailored bookmarklets. So uh, this is the first thing, R2.js. Uh, the question here is that can we is a bit more um, hefty. So we created something which is called now Minet. Uh, and what, what is the goal of Minet? So uh, the goal of Minet is actually to provide you with some common line tools which is going to like handle all the pesky details of web mining for you. So basically all the things which are in bold are the thing on which you are going to focus and work, actually work. All the thing which is around is the thing I handle for you so you don't have to. So multi-threading, multi-processing, and, and so on. I will do that for you. You, you just 
focused on the fact which is I want to get, for instance, one million page from the web and then extract the actual uh, content and data for, uh, for it. Do we have time for a demo? No, maybe so. So uh, basically, MyNet is a CLI tool. It's a Unix tool. Uh, which uh, like complied to the Unix philosophy. So uh, it does one thing, only one thing well, and this thing is web mining, which is a big hefty thing, but it does it well. And you can like pipe commands and so on, and it looks like that, for instance. So basically you are going to use the command line tune to be able to, for instance, fetch a lot of pages from the web, then scrape uh, massively and uh, in a parallel parallelized fashion uh, from a lot of uh, web pages. You could also extract uh, raw content from articles, so you can do like NLP stuff on it uh, afterwards and so on. So it's a really, uh, it's, it's a Swiss Army knife for uh, web mining, which is uh, scalable and which is uh, lo-fi. It doesn't run on any database. It works on CSV file. It pipes to the STD out and on the pipes. And it's really like, yeah, lo-fi. Uh, and what's more, uh, the thing which is really important for us and which is like uh, true for R2 and MyNet is that it relocalizes data collection on the researchers' computers themselves. Sometimes you need a server, but sometimes you don't. And it's important for the researchers to be able to like control uh, his or her data by, by being able to do this stuff on uh, his or her computer, uh, so they are like really in, in control. And basically, in social sciences, we rarely do what we call like big data, TEM. We don't do uh, this stuff. Everything stands and is able to fit in a single computer. And what's more, if you really want to do uh, some Jupyter stuff, and that's your right, uh, you have a programmatic API which hides all the complexity for you. So if you want to do something like, okay, I want to fetch one million pages from the internet and I want to do it right, uh, you can just do a simple for loop and you will have all this stuff handled for you. And so uh, then we have seen like how to enable researchers to scrape, uh, to collect data from APIs. And so the question is, what's the next step? Can we design something which is a bit more uh, ambitious, something which is more like a, a GUI? And uh, we actually can. So for instance, in the lab, we are uh, developing a tool which is called Hive, which is a web crawler, which has a dedicated interface which enables uh, researchers to like crawl the web, crawl a subset of the web, and be able like to make sense of it without having any kind of uh, technical, um, technical knowledge. So how do we enable researchers to crawl the web? <coughs> Using this tool, so Hive. It looks like that, for instance. So you have an interface. Everything is like you push button and you input things uh, using the keyboard. You don't have to know how to code. You don't have to know how to program. And you are still able to like crawl millions of web pages and be able to like construct, build a corpus, which is a subset of the web on which you are uh, actually um, working on. <coughs> and so finally, we use this design. We use designers, actual designers. Uh, to be able to serve a robust methodology which has been proven to work on uh, many like socio uh, sociological um, works. And uh, we, like, we designed the tool to be able to represent this kind of methodology. <coughs> and what's more, I just want to emphasize uh, last time that it's really non-trivial. Uh, some people have already tried to like, build a crawler and crawl the web using a, a spider here to build and program the spider. I is this really easy? No. So you have to make some things. And like, for instance, on this particular interface, we had to like build our own indexing uh, database to be able to like index multi-layered graph. And we have um, a talk which was given here like two years ago, if you want to, to check. And it was, it was, yeah, it's called the trough, basically. That's the job. Yeah, so uh, as a conclusion, uh, my main point here is that uh, researchers uh, should not be expected to like learn uh, all the ins and outs of uh, web mining and programming. And so there is always a, a trade-off when you design tools for them, suited to their needs, uh, between uh, scalability, so how much data they can handle and, uh, and fetch, and usability, so how easy is it to use the tool and to, um, to do uh, this kind of stuff. So we need to be able to design a user path. And to do so, we need to be able to take a step back on what we are doing and take the time to like abstract uh, our design uh, path. And uh, I hope that's uh, what we are doing uh, right now. So uh, what's the future? Uh, we would like to do a, a GUI for MyNet. So uh, the researchers are able to like uh, use it without uh, needing to learn the Unix uh, command line. And so if anyone is uh, up for it, uh, we, need, uh, we need people. We are recruiting also. 
and uh, thank you for listening. Yes. Uh, uh, with, with what? The robot that takes tea? Uh, I will say to you officially that I do, but I do not. <laughs> no, uh, basically, it's, for us, it's not a, an ethical question. It's more of a technical question because it's really heavy uh, for us to like fetch the thing. And we don't know how to do that very well, so we don't. But we, we could. We could do it. Yes. We use CrayP on the Hive, for instance. So they, it, but I think the version we use does not respect the robots.txt. Yes? Uh, so a while back I built my own flash drive in and then I came across Scrape, which yeah. is an instance-based learning algorithm where you can give an example of the data with a schema and then train your Scrape and extract it from the data. Yeah. Have you tried to do that? Yeah. We, we try to use those tools with researchers a lot. So those are basically tools that um, scrape automatically by learning what you are trying to extract. Uh, it did not very, it did not work very, very well. We also tried to design our own tools, but failed uh, miserably, basically. Uh, and uh, it's something we, we we are still interested in, but we haven't found the the, the thing which really works yet with our researchers. Yes. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, for instance, right now we are working. What? Yeah. So the question is: uh, Is there an example of uh, like actual uh, research uh, project or um, a question we are actually uh, using web mining for? And so uh, currently we are working on a project which is uh, which aims at uh, studying how people in France uh, share and read media's. And so we are using web mining in uh, multiple of fashions. For instance, we collect all the uh, articles, uh, text from uh, 400 uh, medias. We collect all the tweets mentioning those U URLs. We collect all the Facebook posts mentioning those URLs and uh, many more. So uh, YouTube uh, videos uh, from those media outlets and so on. So we collect a, a really large uh, amount of data to be able to see whether like uh, medias uh, polarize around political questions or not, etc. Yes. Uh, to afford what? Uh, I mean, uh, how do you deal with the automatic crossing or okay. So uh, for for Facebook, there is a trick which is actually uh, interesting, which is that they still need to serve a, mobi a mobile uh, application, which is heavily used in India. And in India, uh, like they, they can't restrict it because uh, else you will like um, block users. So you can like hit on it like a madman, and it it still works. Uh, it's not really a good. It's a good option, but the fact is that they won't serve you like date, actual data. Sometimes you have like relative dates, and you need to parse those, those relative dates to be able to find things, but it's usually a good solution to be able to scrape massively uh, Facebook, for instance. So we, we found workarounds, and if we don't find workarounds, we use like uh, proxy meshes, which are able to like hit uh, from uh, multiple angles uh, fastly. Uh, not yet, it will soon, because we need to. But if you want, you can help us. Any other question? Thank you. Thanks.